and welcome once again to the breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Now let's go back in history to the year 2003 in the Maldives, where on this day civil unrest broke out uh, across the country after the, a prisoner was killed in one of their prisons. It was a 19-year-old prisoner called Evans, uh, Hassan Evan, um, who was well unlawfully killed by uh, uh, correctional officers in the prison. Um, it had started a day before when uh, prisoners um, on two separate cells were having issues with each other and were being violent at each other, uh, throwing items between um, you know, their cells. Eventually, of course, a report was made. The uh, police officers or the correctional officers came uh, to Evans prison, or Evans cell rather, um, with a list of those who apparently had been causing trouble. Um, his name was not on that list, um, you know, at first, and, but eventually, you know, they came with a list to take out people from the, from, uh, the cell. Um, they came the first time, took out a few people, and then came the second time with a new list that apparently had his name on it. But since he, you know, had originally said that he wasn't a part of the people who was causing trouble, he uh, refused to come out. Um, after, you know, a little bit of uh, cajoling, he eventually stepped out of his prison. Um, and then, you know, a few minutes afterwards, because, of course, he continued to say that he wasn't a part of those who were causing unrest or who were throwing items between, cell, um, between cells, then the police officers attacked him and, you know, beat him until he was eventually dead. Um, that then caused an unrest in the prison. More correctional officers were sent in. Uh, three prisoners were shot dead. About 17 of them were injured uh, while they were trying to calm the unrest in the prison. Um, and then the news of his death then spread you know, across the city. And then you know, it, it turned out into a whole uh, city-wide protest um, uh, for, you know, um, for, you know, against his killing um, in Maldives. It lasted, um, I think, the whole day. Um, it started around 1,100 hours on the 20th of September 2003 and spread across the whole uh, city until it eventually was uh, calmed uh, down a few days later. Um, but that basically was uh, the day that um, Haran Evans was killed, Hassan Evans, I beg your pardon, was killed at the Mafushi prison in the Maldives. Hmm. Interesting story. Th this was really um, big at that time, 2003, when... You know, when they even interviewed some people, they said a civil unrest was unheard of in, in, you know, where they were. It was not something, you know, they had done. But because of the fact that, you know, a teenager had, you know, been allegedly killed, he had been in prison for um, drug offenses. But, you know, at the end of the day, the, the president of the country had to set up a presidential commission to investigate the death of, you know, this, this young man. But people really complained that many important parts of the events and the incidents was actually omitted from the report and really, um, mm. you know. Yeah, and also the Maldives is not known for civil unrest or for rioting. It's known as a travel destination. That's what most people see it as, you know, and they have a lot of uh, good, you know, publicity, mm. um, you know, to invite people, you know, and tourists to always visit the Maldives. You know, it's one of the people, places, if you ask any, any random person, your top 10 travel destinations, most people will mention the Maldives, you know, mostly because of the publicity that it has gotten. And so reading about um, civil unrest and the death of a prisoner and sort of level of brutality, you know, is really, really shocking uh, compared to what any other person would think when they hear of the Maldives. And there compared to what other people would think of other African, other countries in Africa, you know, for, for instance, regarding the level of violence we see, prison breaks and all of that. Yeah. So it's good that... You know, generally, they have that um, reputation for being a peace-loving country. Um, today in history, 2007, it, it was a very, you know, important day in the history of the U.S., similar to what happened in the Maldives, also like a civil unrest or like a civil rights movement. Um, so what happened was um, this black guy had gone to ask a white guy if he could sit under a tree or if, you know, this was just for whites only. You know, just to let you know the level of racial segregation, you know, in the U.S. And this was what, 2007, he went on to say, oh, can I sit under the tree? And there was a scuffle there. And the next day, um, they found nooses on the tree. For the black Americans, the nooses was, you know, very symbolic because when, you know, the slave trade really um, gave way, lynching, violence against black people became you know, one of the ways that they tried to enforce control 
you know, by the whites over the, over the blacks. You know, so back then when you see a news outside your house, I, you know, at your office and you're a black person, it just serves as a means to intimidate and harass, and harass you. So for the fact that this guy went to ask for permission to sit under that tree and the next day he found three black nooses, it really was an indicator that these white guys had it out for you. They were trying to intimidate you and, you know, you know be violent. So what they did was these guys came together and they beat up that white guy. Now, guess what? For a beating, for a fight that happened in his school, he didn't die. What happened was just they had a fight over the news that he saw and alleged racial comments that he heard. Um, this guy was sentenced to 10 months in prison. And people wondered, why would someone get sentenced 10 months? Why would a black guy get sentenced 10 months in prison for beating up a, 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 another child or for beating up a student? And people began to protest. You know, There were talks about people traveling spending about 21 hours on bus rides to go from city um, to, to, to Jenna, Louisiana, to make sure that they protest that, you know, this really wasn't called for simply because he was black, you know, and this guy is white. So that's why he's getting 10 months in prison for a school fight. So it really was a big one. Um, thousands and thousands of people, they said between 15,000 and 20,000 protesters marched to ask for, you know, these six guys to be freed from prison. Yeah, uh, they were called the Jenna Six. Uh, happened in Louisiana, I believe, um, in 2007. And yes, there were there was the um, racial tension. There was also the news. Um, you know, like like you mentioned, um, they you know de definitely did beat up you know this uh, the white kid, but and they didn't deny it. But I think one of the challenges that you know emerged was first of all you know like you mentioned you know this is a, a fight in school that couldn't you know shouldn't have gone that far. Um, and also because they uh, were um, um, the first charge that was you know placed on them was attempted second degree murder, murder yes. uh, which a lot of people thought to be very unfair because you know it had happened other times people had gotten into fights that they didn't necessarily uh, um, you know need a second degree murder charge, um, and of course the kid didn't die. So um, there were all of all of those you know uh, conversations you know and you know two things if you remember also the movie When They See Us uh, that was you know really really popular about a year ago. Um, that's one of the things that was also, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very similar situation of how racial injustice um, and the legal system in the United States plays out. So yes, that's what happened today in history, 2007 and 2003, civil unrest, both in the US and in Maldives. When we come back from this break, we'll be taking a look at the uh, forex regime of CBN Governor Godin Emefile, how that relates to, you know, the liquidity in Nigeria's market, how that relates to the depreciation of the Naira and how it's affecting manufacturers in the country. Stay with us.